Have you ever wanted a big red laser pointer that you can use to point things out when you're presenting? Well, I have exactly that and much more with this free program. My name's Rexel and I'm going to be walking you through how to use PP Ink and what's it capable of for teaching and presenting. You can go over here to this link and download this one, extract that, then go over to the folder that you got and open that one. So what this will do is it will show up thing on your system tray which you can't really see right now since this is my second screen so I'll just put it in post but you'll see one on your system tray and one thing over here and if you click that thing or if you click either of those it will open this up and you can drag it around so PP ink is really useful for for directing where people look at when you're doing your presentations so the first one would be alt when you press alt your cursor becomes this um, red um, arrow and you have a spotlight on where your cursor is so you can quickly show a hey, look over here now look over here this is what i'm talking about now this is what i'm talking about so it's a really neat way of showing where to look and you can just do that by pressing alt and letting go will remove that then next up is you have a bunch of pens you can access these pens by either just clicking here or pressing one two three or like the number row on your keyboard so pressing one will select this one pressing two will select this one pressing three will select this one so you can use these pens over here and you can actually just um, go right click the, um, the icon on the system tray and this will pop up and you can change the different settings over here we're gonna go to pen and you can change the alpha and the color say i want this one to be yeah right uh bright orange with like with half opacity or half alpha and what that's gonna do is it's just going to add a light wash of color over my drawing or over my screen rather than draw completely over it so I'm going to open it again, Control alt g and I'm going to select that one. And now I can highlight these parts. You can also, let's erase this one first. You can also use the line tool, which is this one, or L for um, its shortcut. So I can just highlight this entire section and highlight this entire section. And it's going to be all neat and straight instead of manually highlighting it. Over here, it's gonna get wobbly. Um, you might have seen that there's also other like sub tools um, for each of the different tools. To see this this menu over here, you have to close it first, open the settings again, and in general enable secondary toolbar. So you'll see the sub tools that are available for you. Now I'm gonna open it again, and for every tool, there's like these variations. So the first one is just your normal standard drawing tool that's for um, the free hand or the hand free drawing and the second one would be the solid version of it so when you make a shape it's gonna fill it in and erase that then the third one is the the opposite of it instead of filling it in it's gonna fill the outside like that which is really really useful I think it's like the best feature here in all of the screen annotation software i've used so i'm gonna use this one and i can actually just highlight this part and that's the only thing you can see on my screen which is really great that's so the third one this is specifically for the white doesn't matter what color you have it's gonna choose white regardless and another one for black so yeah and that carries over to other tools so this one is gonna be a solid square this one's gonna be the outside square and one for white and one for black so yeah. also if you click this one if you click the same tool it's gonna scroll over the possible sub tools that you have so if you click rectangle it's gonna choose the normal one if i click it again it's gonna choose the solid one click it again it's gonna choose the empty one etc you can also do that using shortcuts so a shortcut for the hand free or freehand drawing is h so if i press h again it's gonna be solid 
H again, it's going to be empty. H again, it's going to be white. H again, it's going to be black. All right, so if you go over here, uh, I can change the height to be bigger. Uh, it used to be six. If you go over here to pens, change this color to pure black and change the alpha to somewhere around in the middle, maybe something like 160. Okay. Now, if I go over here, then choose the empty one. And what that's going to do is do this like spotlight effect, which is really, really nice. Open that up and choose the empty one. It's going to be like I'm highlighting a specific spot. So, yeah, uh, that's how I normally use the empty version of the rectangle. Also, there's this eraser tool, which erases on a per stroke basis. So you can't just erase a part of it. You need to erase the entire stroke. All right, let's go over to a different um, example. Uh, this is Canva and you can, you can also use PowerPoint, but I'm just gonna use Canva. So in here, um, I can still have I still have access to PP Ink, which is available to me over here. And uh, yeah, while I'm going through the presentation, this is just a, an example presentation, by the way. I can use the tools. I, I keep opening it using Control Alt G. I can open and close it using the same shortcut. So say I want to highlight this part, you know, while I am doing my presentation. You can also press escape to completely remove all the drawings. So if I draw something over here, blah, 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 then do another drawing and I press escape, it's gonna erase that. And the next time I open it, it's not gonna be visible over there. So if you want something to be visible, say you wrote something over here. If you want that to be visible still, when you um, close this doc, you need to either go here, mouse pointer mode, and then you can um, click on the screen again, but it would still be visible. So you can use that to let the strokes and annotations still be visible without the menu being open or with you being able to manipulate the actual screen and click on things rather than be stuck on this mode where you'll, be, you'll only be able to draw. Right. You can also use clip arts which can be game changing for other presentations since you can upload your own clip arts and these are like the default ones over here but yeah you can use a sad face and put over a sad face over there you can use uh, whatever this guy is and a thumbs down oh this is also like uh, a brush so you can also do things like that where you can use a certain clip art to be uh, like a brush stroke so it's gonna stamp that everywhere you click so there's that and I'm gonna clear all of that open it again you can also use this one this is useful for say you want to show a step by step something like this right where you can show oh you need to get this one first and get this one first do it step by step like a formula or just you know a general step by step guide on something else and you can also use arrows which is really useful so when you long press this you're gonna have different variations on what kind of arrow you want you can upload your own even so you can have like a field day customizing this to whatever arrowhead you want but I'm gonna use this standard one choose a specific pen color if I left click and drag it's gonna go over to where I am pointing but if I right click that's where it's going to point and I can choose where it starts and you can have this thing turned on which is turned on by default which snaps to specific points in the drawing so you can have like an arrow that specifically points to this arrow to another arrow stuff like that you can also do that with the line tool it snaps into place to specific points in the drawing which is really great but you can turn that off you can have more freedom in where you want your points to be drawn there's also the fading tag so you can go over here and you can see that there's this red thing that's actually a little f 
So if, if I press F, it's gonna draw a solid thing. So it's gonna act normally. If I press F again, it's gonna fade away that drawing. So whatever stroke I make with this pen, it's gonna fade away. You can, I can choose a different color and this is the standard one. So it's not gonna go away. But if I go back to blue, it's gonna fade away. I can select green, then press F again and that's gonna fade away. So hey, this is a really useful feature for you to draw something without having to erase it afterwards. Next up is some editing tools. Say I want to have an example text over here. Um, don't mind. Oh yeah, so that, that also happens depending on the fading tag if it's active. So I'm gonna disable that. I'm gonna type something again. And say something happened like this where it's not just like this part it's not visible but this part is and you can use the different um, editing tools over here so I'm gonna drag this over here and that's that's the move tool and there's also the copy tool which is this plus sign over here and there's also um, this is going to move all of the strokes and you can also do this where um, it's gonna scale it so first you need to choose your like anchor so i'm gonna put it at the center then i'm gonna select this one you know with, with the dotted line that means like this is the active one if i click and drag it's gonna change the size depending on that anchor point i'm gonna do it again this time it's gonna rotate and i choose this one like this part over here that's gonna be my anchor if i select this one and drag it's gonna rotate along that anchor you can also edit things so instead of typing it again you can just edit using this tool double click it and edit over here you can also select stuff using this one the lasso tool uh, selecting everything so yeah then move it since everything is selected so that's useful so if you do certain strokes you can manipulate them afterwards so it's not just um a static stroke in this example i'm gonna be showing what i use this for the most since i'm gonna be using this to teach complicated software there's this tool over here which is the zoom tool and by default it has like three or four settings so the first one is this, the normal zoom where wherever you point your cursor at something it's gonna zoom over there and this is really useful for really specific and tiny details on the UI. So something like this in Blender, it really has a small user interface. It's hard to point out specific stuff when it's this condensed and really tiny. The next one is, um, so you can see that there's a red rectangle here. That means it's on snapshot mode, I think. Not, not sure what it's called, but you can click and drag a specific section on the screen then if you let go it's gonna go over there and then you can draw on top of it which is really nice all right so i'm gonna close that open it again so the first zoom is here so the the shortcut for zoom is z this is the second one since i clicked it again and this is the third one which is the spotlight version so yeah those are the three different zoom settings i like using this one since I can still click on stuff. Say I want to um, press Ctrl Alt G. I can still select and manipulate the actual screen I'm on. So I can click on icons, you know, while the zoom is still active. But I can um, use the other one, say the snapshot mode, and highlight a specific area so I can talk about a specific thing, thing about that specific area. But the downside to this is I can't directly access the thing on my screen. So I can't click on the icon to show how it works and stuff like that. So yeah, really, really useful. And yeah, there's also like a bunch of different settings. Um, you can use this to hide the current drawing. You can use this to take a snapshot of the current, the current drawing. You can use this to undo. You can use this to clear the drawing without closing pp ink so i can use that now it's gone but i'm still actively drawing i'm still in pp ink you can save and open specific um, strokes that you had 
So you can draw something really complicated, right? But you don't want to lose that. You can save it over here, then um, open it again next time when you want to um, have those strokes ready again. Okay. So these are just the different settings. You can disable stuff on the toolbar if you don't use them. For example, I don't use these. So I'm just gonna turn them off. So the next time I open it, it's not. It's gonna be much shorter and doesn't take as much space compared to last time. And you can also change the default font and font size, the default colors and how solid they are. If it's 255 it's gonna be a solid color it's gonna be a solid color if it's 255 if it's 80 or less than 255 it's gonna be like a highlighter so this one's 80 the orange one so i'm gonna show that and this is what it looks like so it's just like a faded um, highlighter you can also turn on and off fading for specific tools say you want the highlighters to be fading you can check this box and you can also change the line style to whatever you want i'm gonna choose this dotted line for that orange right this one so this one it's gonna look like that turned on fading for that that's why it's it's um disappearing if i turn that off it's gonna be it's gonna stay like that so really really useful what else you can also change this the hotkeys on which specific tools you have access to and by default um the cursor it's on alt when you press alt it's gonna show up and the zoom is on z and all stuff like that um i haven't touched on every single feature like the snapshot and pointer mode and like the video recording but i use a different tool for recording like i, I use obs but it's not connected to pp ink and i have a different workflow on how i use pp ink but in general that's how you would use pp ink on on whatever you do like your presentations your um pitching your pitch decks or whatever in general it's just a really awesome and useful tool and other than that it's free when you're changing your settings say you change a bunch of values here change a bunch of styles here to make sure that those settings stay the same the next time you open pp ink you need to click this save to files that will basically save the settings when you close pp ink and open it again so that's something to keep in mind so that's it for today's video leave a like give your thoughts down here in the comment section and thanks for watching